family. And you never know where the words are going. And uh, it is important. Don't right but it's God who has the motive so we should always know why we are in the house of God what is the motive mm. it is that motive that God will wear mm. either to bless you or just ignore you may we mm. have the right motive this morning Amen. why are you in the house of God mm. why do you have that marriage? Why? What is the reason? Why as a pastor do you want to grow that church? Mm. It's those motives that God weighs. It's those motives that will cause God to bless us or otherwise. Mm. Otherwise, God is a great and powerful God. He has given us health. He has given us life. And mm. for that and that alone, we ought to worship and glorify Him in Honduras, in Hawaii, because Camnet is being streamed there. Come on, in New Zealand, everywhere around the world, by the special breath of God all around Zambia, you are able to download from the Play Store, Kamne TV, Zambia, and you will be able to watch us. And so this morning, we love you, we appreciate each one of you. Welcome to this service and this great man of God, my number one preacher. He's so anointed this morning, and let's all be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand of praise. This is my wife of 34 years, plus the two years of mark timing. We are so grateful. In your position of standing, let's welcome the TV audience once again. We're coming to you from the Healing Word Ministries International right here in Ibex U. And to those of you that are feeling called to go to church, uh, may God bless your blankets. May God bless everything that you are doing, but it's not a good gesture because the Bible says, what shall separate us? Shall the wind or cold, summer, rain, season, snow, can those things separate us? Surely not. Shall COVID separate us from the love of God? Not even death, the Bible says. And so we are so grateful to all of you that have made it this morning. And all of you that are watching in your rooms. I normally quote my favorite scripture. There are some people even in this church, since COVID began, they've never stepped their foot in this church because they are scared they may catch COVID not in the supermarket but at the church not at the funeral but at the church they go anywhere they drive anywhere but coming to church they are scared of COVID but to all of you that say Jehovah is my God I'll follow him 
May the Lord bless you. Amen. And may the Lord keep you. Amen. I said, may the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord keep you. Amen. And the Bible says, may it be done according to your faith. And those of you watching, members of this church, members of other churches, I know you have that strong faith that soon COVID will go. Amen. Then I'll go to church. But there are those also who say, with or without, Jehovah is God. Amen. He will keep you. And we thank God for our government to allow us to pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a small matter. Nations are crying. In America, uh, my friend just told me, even in Nigeria, now they've begun to pray and some countries are opening up even flights are opening up because they are saying i think covid has come to stay that's when they are knowing didn't you know we knew these things but we are so grateful to the lord the same god who puts the devil under his feet he will put covid under your feet for the sake of his name. Amen. I want you to take your Bibles just before you sit. Let's read the word of God from Psalm 19. Psalm 19. There is something that the psalmist said in verse 12. You can read the whole chapter, but I just want to begin from verse 12. From the New International Version. From the New International Version, for the sake of the church that I pastor and I do not see, come TV viewers, we will read from the New International Version. The Bible says from verse 7, the verse 12, who can discern his errors? Forgive my hidden sins. Keep your servant also from willful sins. The sins that we commit willfully. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless. Innocent of a great transgression. This 14 is my foundation. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Jehovah, we give you thanks. We give you praise and glory for this word. I pray that you may take these words and drop the words in the hearts that is receptive. The heart that is receptive to hear your word. I bless your holy name that Jehovah you have kept us alive in the land of the living. May your name be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give Jesus a big hand as you take your seats. I want to speak to you on the subject that I've entitled Great Words and Great Thoughts. Great what? Say it out loud. Great words and great thoughts. Child of the Most High God, I am so privileged to be your pastor. Because as your pastor, Ikoa, some of you people have seen my wife and I, where we're coming from, you've known our path and 
the confessions that we make before you from day to day, from week to week, from month to month. I want you to know that it is those words and those thoughts that I want to expound on today. The psalmist, the first thing he does, don't you, is, Father, forgive my hidden thoughts. Forgive my hidden sins. Anything that I might not have confessed, please forgive me. My wife and I, I can't remember, but we lived in a house that was built some time back. And whenever you opened the taps, because of corrosion inside, there was no pressure coming. I mean, water was not coming out with force because there was those white things that are inside. What do you call them? The corrosion that takes place in the pipes. White, white stuff. Kaosham. And it would just trickle. So you are there waiting for the, just the pot to fill. It would take minutes. But we've also lived in the house that was recently built. When I say recent, I'm not talking about yesterday. I'm talking about, you know, my wife and I have done Zungulila and Osaka. Eh? We have been in several houses. But one of the houses that we lived in had new taps, new everything. And that is Mezaf, to the glory of God. When those flats were built, I was one of the first to occupy that uh, flat. And by the grace of God, you just turn the taps open, you see the water going fast. What's the difference, Katongo? The difference is in the age of the two houses. One house was so familiar that it would not produce the water as it was needed. Another house was very new. It was obedient to its landlord. As I'm speaking, you can take this <clears throat> and put yourself in that situation. Whether you are an old house or a new house. What stops people from accessing the blessings? The flow of blessings is the familiarity with God. We are free to go sin, come back in church, sin, come back in church. But I want you to know that that stops the flow of God's blessings. I want you to know that the psalmist first dealt with his hidden sins. Not sins, uh, Michael, which people knew. You know, when you divorce your wife, you beat your wife, and you do, they will say, oh, and people know you for that. But this is not the case. It is the sins that you commit without even your wife knowing. Without your husband knowing. It is the sins that you commit without going to rob the bank, but you are just on your bed sinning. And robbing the bank. Hello? Amen. How many of you know that God does not hold us accountable for breaking in the bank, but he holds us accountable on our thoughts? Amen. I can hear the amens are so few. But let me say that. Jesus said, Brother Kabwe, Amen. you have heard in the Old Testament that whosoever shall commit adultery will be guilty. But now I say unto you, whosoever shall think about a woman lustfully, he has already committed. 
Oh Jehovah God. So in the New Testament, it's not about the action. It's about the entertaining of your thoughts. And this is why the psalmist says, Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted before you. Oh, Jehovah God, child of the Most High God, I want you to know that God expects too much from us. He expects too much from all of us here. If he doesn't expect things from you, you don't have to say amen. But to those of us, he requires too much. You can say amen. amen. Let the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart be acceptable before you. I want to talk about great thoughts, great words. But we begin with the thoughts. Child of the Most High God, do you know that there is a difference, for, uh, Edward, between you receiving a check from Brother Mwanga? If he gives you a check and he says, Brother Edward, I want to bless you with money. Here is 10,000 kwacha. Go to the bank and draw that amount. Do you know whether you are a magician, you can't go beyond that? Whether you know people in the bank, you can't corrupt them to say, please add 2,000 more because I've got needs. Once a check is written and it has been signed, that's the exact amount you are going to draw. Hallelujah. There is no man in this world there is no woman in this world that will ever, ever give you a check without digits. Just open it up and say, according to your needs, when you go to the bank, fill it in. Not even Bill Gates. You know why? Because he's not as rich as he claims. Pastor, what are you saying? Tell him to try me. Because if he gave me that, the first thing I would do is to ask, how, how much is he worth? If they tell me 50 billion, I'll make sure that I sign 49.999 billion. By the time he's going to the bank, you'll find one question. Why? Because I know what is worth. But church, I want you to know that nobody can give you an open check. Now there is a man from Galilee. He issued a check. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, fill in the digits. Oh glory to God. Whatsoever things. The Bible says, please read for me uh, John chapter 15, verse, uh, honey, can you read for me? John 15, verse 7. Listen to what, if that is not an open check, what is it? John chapter 15, verse 7. Uh -huh. I'm reading from the Amplified version. From the Amplified. John chapter 15 and verse 7. Uh-huh. If you live in me, if you live in me, and my words remain in you, oh Jehovah, and continue to live in your and heart, my, words my words remain in you, and they continue to live, live in, in you. Your hearts, uh huh. Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Togombe, have you heard the last statement, Sunny? Ask whatever you will and I will give it to you. Does that sound like an open check? Does that sound like if I ask God for Findeco, he can give it to me? The Bible says, Jairus, let every man be a liar. 
but God be true. Jehovah has signed a blank check and says if you stay in me and my words stay in you, you shall ask for whatsoever you want and it shall be given to you. Hey. Oh Jehovah. Oh Jehovah. May I come to this? What stops people, Brother Lesa, from cashing that check in John chapter 15, verse 7? I'll tell you what stops people from cashing that check. Number one, it is sin. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 5 that it's not that God cannot give us these good things. But our sins, chapter 5, verse 25, but our sins have withholden. They have withheld these good things from us. So that is why the psalmist said, Lord, please remove my hidden sins. I don't want to be hindered in this life because I was born for greatness. That is Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. Am I right? Please check it out before I mislead the nation. Jeremiah chapter 5. Who has uh, the... You know, this is a live service. Before they say... Mm, the pastor misquoted. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 25. Give it to me. What does it say? Your iniquities, your iniquities have turned these blessings away. Your iniquities have turned these blessings away. And your sins have kept good uh, harvests from you. Your sins have kept good, good harvest, harvest from, from you. you. Now, there are two things there, Brother Manga, that the Bible brings. Okay? Iniquity and sin. These two, Donji, are not one and the same. Uh-uh. When a person is used to living in sin. You may not know that sin has actually come into your life and it has taken over your life. In Bemba we say, When sin becomes part of your lifestyle, it is called iniquity. But sin is not your lifestyle. You just happen to call somebody stupid and you slap them without knowing or because you are overtaken with emotions. That is sin. It's not something that you planned. You don't live in it. You are not a violent person. Even when you beat somebody, don't you? They will say, mm, not to that one. That one can beat a person. But it's true. So that is sin. Now he says, your iniquities, because of your perpetual sins, because of your hidden sins, and because of your iniquities, these good blessings have been withheld from you. So it's not that God cannot give you what you want. It, I want to address somebody here. Those of you that are watching this broadcast, I know and I know and I know for sure that the world has messed up with our thinking. It has messed up with our thinking. Why? Some of you in this congregation who are here, you think the only way you can become a somebody is when you have a job. That's how the world has deformed our thinking. No wonder the Bible says to Kombi, renew your mind. Let this mind which was in Christ Jesus be in you also. Do you think, Brother Linda, there was a time when Jesus went looking for a job? As a youth, do you ever imagine Jesus looking for carpentry jobs because his father was a carpenter and say, I want to work for sir? Talk to me. Do you think Jesus went to that level? No. And the Bible says, let this mind, 
which was in Christ Jesus be in you also. Meaning, Jesus had a great mind. He knew that his father was able to put food on the table. He knew that his father was able to keep him from sinning. And so the mind of Christ was great. It was a great mind. And I want to say to somebody here and those watching on television, Mother Zambia, let me tell you something. You were born for greatness. Oh, I wish I can get somebody excited like I get excited. Edward, it's time I think that I was born for greatness. I think like jumping because I know I was born for greatness. I don't need your validation. I don't need your approval. I said I don't need your certifying me to be great. The Lord already certified me. Oh, Jehovah God. The Bible says we who were not a people. We have now become a people of God. If somebody is in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things have passed away, new things have come. Those of you born for greatness, wave your hands. Just wave your hands and say, I was born for greatness. Say it out loud. I was born for greatness. Let this mind that was in Jesus Christ be in your soul. Amen. Brother Spencer, your sins and my sins are what stops us from cashing that check. There is a second thing that stops us from cashing that check. Our thoughts. The Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. As a man what? As a man thinks, so is he. I think it's in Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7. Please check it out for me quick and may God bless you. I think it's in there. Uh, get me that scripture, uh, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter? 23 verse 7. Is that the one? As he thinks in his heart, so is he. As he thinks in his heart, so, so is he. As one who reckons, he says to you, eat of it. does part of As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Look at your person. Have you? Have you ever seen? Some people who sit like this. And when you greet them, how are you? <laughs> we know. Have you seen them? So, tamu ele kunjito. If we ven, if we. Producing great waves of poverty. If we ven, if we. Ah, my only fino fi ne shikushali to sanga. Welcome to poverty. The Bible says a man shall be filled because of the fruit of his lips. Whatsoever you say, according to numbers, the Bible says whatsoever you say in my ear, that's what I will do for you. This word of God, ladies and gentlemen, it is straight and clear. Does the Bible say when you go to university, like Brother Siatwambo, that's when you'll be rich? Read again. John chapter 15, verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, is there a background of your parents there? Does the Bible say if you come from Kablonga, Destiny is assured. You know I came from John Howard. In fact, I shouldn't be completely saying John Howard. The best way is to say John Howard. Because you see, those in New York, they won't know. They will think this is a wonderful city. John Howard, hallelujah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is not where you are coming from. 
it is not who your father is it is not who your mother is you can be somebody from the street when you hear the word of god and you say this is mine oh jehovah everyone say words everyone say thoughts just those two things when you pick them up you'll be great and let me tell you, Brother Mbanga, this message, even as we begin to pray, some of you, today, your lives will change. Amen. I've told you a story. One man that I sat under also went to be with the Lord. Uh, this past week or the other week, Maurice Serrero. I want you to know that it was a blessing for my wife and I to sit under these people. Amen. To have them lay their hands on us. Amen. People like Oral Roberts, Kenneth Hagin, uh, Maurice Serrero, John Austin, uh, T.L. Osborne, W.R. Schambach, and all these people, I sat under them. And when they are preaching the word of God, you just feel, oh my God. And these are men who don't have the do as I say. <laughs> these are men who do cop the word of God. And tell you that if you put it into practice, the word will work for you. None of these soldiers of Calvary, don't you? None of them glorified themselves. To say you will know that I'm T.L. Osborne. You will know I'm all Robert. They never talked about their names. They talked about Jesus. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. They just talked about Jesus. But here's the deal. As I say, I've told you this testimony before. Let me quote these two people. Because where I'm sitting today, this ministry cannot be complete without this too right. i'm not talking about my parents i'm talking about preachers renhard bonk Amen. when he came to zambia in 1981 i was just an usher the big yellow tent had five poles that 10,000 seater I think it had five or seven poles or ten poles. Brother Smata Smata will remember this because we were together. In that he was doing, I think, his second year or third year at the University of Zambia. But I can't remember. Brother Smata Smata is listening to this. When he came, I was just an usher. And the pulpit was like this to Gombe. Every pole was assigned by two ushers. A lady and a man. A lady and a man. There was proper order. By the grace of God. <laughs> By the grace Amen. of God. The first poor was assigned to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And sometimes I would stand like a question mark. <laughs> Glory to God. But as I stood there from day to day. One day, Reinhard Bonke, it was my first time to greet him. He just came from the pulpit. He walks down. He said hello to the lady without greeting her. He just said hello. Then he comes to me. Give me your hand to come. Stand, Sonny. And this is what he did. We are both standing. Then he says, how are you? He didn't say hello. He says, how are you? I said, I'm fine, sir. I was happy. <laughs> hey, Jehovah. And I thought he would just say hello and go. He goes on to say, what is your name? I said, I'm Moses. He said, oh, Moses, you, where did you live? In this city? I said, yes, sir. I am in this city. He says, glad to know you. And I remain standing there. Sit down, sonny. I remained standing there, and the whole place, they were looking at these two great people. 
Hallelujah. One from Germany and one from John Howard. Glory to God. But I saw this man. He goes back by Natkombe. He walks right through. He didn't want to go back straight. He walks right through at the back of the tent. And my eyes were like this. I'm just saying, who else is, is he greeting? He never greeted anyone. He went around the tent inside and he came back and sat down. We finished the crusade. I was an usher. We finished the crusade. Don't you? I'll never forget certain names. We were just helping to bring down the tent. I was not a tent crew brother. I was just helping. When the crusade was over, everyone went. We remained about 100 there about helping. And I see this man, white man, coming through the crowd. And he comes and says, um, he comes to me, he's leaving these people, and he comes to me and he says, what's your name? I said, I'm Moses. He says, Moses, what do you do? I said, what do you mean? <laughs> he says, do you wake or what? I said, no, I'm a loafer. Confirm the loafer. <laughs> and he says, do you mind going with us to Kitwe? I would like you to join the team. I said, oh, I have to ask my mother. She lives in John Howard. And he says, if your mother gives you permission, be here tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. Once we pack these things, we'll be heading for Kitwe. He said, 7 o'clock, when my mother gave me permission, I started off from John Howard around 05. <laughs> Just in case. <laughs> You miss destiny, just in case. Zero five, did I have transport money? No. There is a scripture in the word of God, they shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not be weary. Hallelujah. I relied on that scripture. Past six, I was at Madero. I was the first and only one. Amen. Glory to God. But story short, I started off at six. But if you ask Smata Smata, we started off in the afternoon Amen. for Kitwe. Siphon trucks start going to Kitwe. And we, put, we pitched the tent uh, just after the robots, as you go to Chingola, there is the hospital here and the butch. There is a place there now, there are shops and everything. We pitched the tent there. The day of the crusade, I was not an usher. I was now one of the tent crew men. And when we secured the place, everyone is gone, we secured the place and uh, uh, everything was okay. All of us who were part of Bonke's team, Bonke never used to eat from the hotel, Vanamuela. He was eating from the caravan with his team. Amen. The 40-foot container, they turned it into, and they would prepare meals. That's where he was eating from. So the Sifan team, Tom Siden, Kenneth Meshaw, and the whole crusade team from South Africa, they are already there. And now after we secure everything, we are going now as tent crew brothers to go and eat. And as we climbed the stairs, one by one, when I climbed the stairs, Bonke saw me. Amen. And he said, hallelujah. Amen. And he called me by name. He said, Moses, you are here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I said, this man, he was sitting next to the late Maurice, uh, Paul Dolasami. He was sitting next to Paul Dolasami. And immediately in that container, I said, stop eating. Everyone stop eating. I want to tell you a story. You see, I don't know how great God is. 
but God is a great God. Now he's telling the story about this John Howard Combon boy who was listening by faith to Combon Radio. (laughs) Hallelujah. And you know, he says, stop. And he says, you know, God is a great God. When I went back to South Africa, the whole time I was in South Africa, three or four times I had a dream. And the same dream. And in this dream, as I was praying for Zambia, I was dreaming about God showing me the map of Zambia covered with the blood of Jesus. And when I saw that map, in that map, I saw the face of this young man. 1981. He says, I saw the face of this young man. Four times it was shown to me. And I didn't know whether I was going to meet this young man or not. I had no idea. But God has made it possible for me to meet this man. And immediately he says, sit here next to me. How I felt. (laughs) You know that story I tell you about a tortoise? When the tortoise, the animals had a party and the, everyone dancing, the elephant breaking down. You know, the whole animal kingdom. But there was a tortoise. It was just looking this way and that way. And one animal went and said, what about you? Everyone is happy you are not dancing. He says, <laughs> you know, the tortoise was already doing its breakdown. But because of the shell, you could not see. And that's how I felt, Brother Manga. That, and Bonki calls me. Dorasami this side, Pastor Chiloba here, and he says, tell me something. I said, Jehovah, who am I that this man is seeing this? I never knew that the man so calmed. Amen. Before we could even establish Kamna TV, he saw it. Going to Bible school, brother. Let me talk about these three. Going to Bible school. As you know, I had no Form 5 certificate, not even a Form 3 certificate, not even. I just said myself. Amen. We are in Kafue, upper room. We pioneered that church. Amen. And this one afternoon, one morning, we finished the service. We are about to be taken. Kafue Secondary School, if you know Kafue Secondary School, we were meeting at Naboya somewhere there, I think. Yeah. If you know that, we were meeting there. 1980, uh, Donji. 1980. And we are about to enter into the vehicle. That missionary vehicle. The Isus. In front was the wife. And also him. So one of the elders, I can't mention for security reasons, is a pastor also, was in the front. So as we went inside there, this old man comes and he looks through. And he says, young man, you, 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 come here. I said, me? He says, yeah. He says, come and sit in front. And he says, sir, uh, will you go back? I want this young man to sit in front. 1980. I was 20 years. And he removes the elderly person, puts him at the back, and he says, sit on the middle. As we start driving, going to Kafue town, he says, what do you do for your life? I said, sir, nothing. I'm just seeking the face of God. He says, have you ever thought of going to Bible college? I said, ah, it has never occurred. But story short, he says, I sense the call of God in your life. Amen. Just give me your name. Give me everything. I, I don't want to go with this to the grave. Give me your name. I said, sir, here's the name. He applied for me to go to assemblies of God. I didn't apply. And Donji, 
that man was Reverend Rema. Reverend Rema was the country director for Assemblies of God in the 80s and is one man who taught Billy Graham at Bible College. Amen. Amen. A man that moved with God. Amen. He was so old, but I want you to know, when he starts preaching, you can't sit in that seat. But that day he just said, give me your name, give me your name. I can't go with this to the grave. Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard about Bonke? Have you heard about Rema? The last one. I'm in America with my friend Nevas Mumba and um, Chikwanda, the late Chikwanda. And a lot of people there. And uh, at John Austin's church, Lakewood. T.L. Osborne is preaching. And when he finished, he came down and sat. When he sat, barely three minutes. You know, John uh, T.L. Osborne used to do this like he had Parkinson's disease, but that was just how he... He moves from where he was, and he goes and he says, uh, John, the Lord has just dropped a word in my spirit for the brothers and sisters from outside America. I want to give it to them. And John Austin gives the... And he says, this word from the Lord is not for every American. It is for those of you that have come out of America. The Lord has just told me right now that you want, some of you are going to be great in your nations. But here's the condition. When you reach your country and the plane touches down, when you touch the ground of your nation, Lift up your hands and shout. Don't whisper. Shout and say, Devil, I am back and I'm in charge. Hey, I am sitting there. The DC 10 is about to touch Kenneth Kaunda International Airport. And the word came, shout. And I said, Lord, Lord, can't I just, you know I've remembered. What will they think of me? And the Lord said, it's up to you. What they will think about you. And don't I was just behind first class. And there were a lot of people in that DC 10 from London. It was and I'm going down the stairs. I'm saying, Melissa, I shout. They will think something. And between the plane and the ground, the Lord said, obedience is better than sacrifice. I had my hand luggage. My hands were full. One here. Another one there, as we were, I just touched down. When I stepped on the ground, I moved to Kombe from where, you know when you are coming out. I moved out and the workers there were thinking, what is he going to do? My wife is at the back on at that time and I wasn't waving at my wife. I put the bag there. <coughs> And I lifted my hands. <clears throat> I said, devil, I am back and I'm in charge. Amen. I picked up the bag. The moment I started going, everyone left, left their place. <laughs> Hallelujah. When I got there, you know, we signed those forms, immigration. The time I was going to the immigration, somebody had it and said, sir, here, you can be here. There was space. Amen. Hallelujah. Because they thought this man needs attention, he has to go to China. And as I finished filling in the forms, I went to stand behind those who were before me. When they looked at me, they said, sir, come here. Come here. And I was first. Hallelujah. Hey! You see, the word of God from a man of God can change your destiny. 
just one way. And when I was there, I went through. Those who were already inside, I went to pick a trolley for my suitcase. I saw one bringing a trolley. He said, sir, here is a trolley. He gave me the trolley and he went to pick his glory to God. Had I missed that opportune time, Eddie, I don't know. You see, our lives are like chess. God just moves. You don't know how God is going to use somebody. This is not what do as I say stuff. This is the word of God. And the Lord orchestrated everything. But he has... The first thing I've learned by Namwila is confession. Amen. The Bible says, hold on to your confession of faith. Hold on to your confession of faith. When people greet me, Pastor True, how are you? I say, I am blessed and highly favored by God. And in this corona time, we have even gone further with my wife. I say I am deeply sanitized in the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. I don't need the alcohol. All I need is the blood of Jesus. Not this alcohol sanitizer. I need the blood of Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that words and thoughts can either position you for greatness or they can bring you down. If you are writing, write this down. God will never do for you beyond your words. Say it out loud. Numbers chapter... Numbers chapter 14. Please turn to it. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Can somebody read it for me from the King James Version and from the New Internet? Please be quick. Oh my goodness. Brother Chris, do you have the King James? Do you have... Who has the King James or New International Version? Who has? Numbers is in the Old Testament. It's not in the New. <laughs> you must be quick to be reading these things. Numbers. Numbers chapter 14. Use the microphone. Numbers chapter 14, verse 28. Uh -huh. King James Version. Say unto them, as truly as I live, says the Lord, as he have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Read it again. Say unto them, as truly as I live, says the Lord, as he have spoken in my ears. As you have spoken, so will I do in to my you. ears. That's what I will do to you. Amen. Thank you, Brother Kabu. As you have spoken in my ears, that's will what I will do to you. Amen. Listen, Ikoa. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. You see, God does not expect you to say or repeat the condition you are in. Brother right. Siatwambo. Right. If somebody is sick, you have a tumor, you have cancer, you have what you have. God does not expect you to be saying, hey, how are you? I have a tumor. I have cancer. Listen to what you are saying. You are saying you have. And so God cannot take it away from you because you enjoy it. Because you have it. When I say I have money, it's mine. I have a car, it's mine. But Eddie, this is language of faith. 
cursor, then what should I say? Listen to this, if I can change someone's thinking. The doctors tell you that you have cancer. You say, okay, this report has come from the doctor. Isaiah also says, whose report will you believe? Because there is a doctor's report, pathologi pathologist's report, journalist's report, chairman's report, this world Donji, is full of reports. Amidst the people reporting, Isaiah stands here. This is our report. Who has believed our report? By his stripes, you are so who has believed our report? You see, the report of God does not depend on what the doctor has said. That is the doctor's report. So now, when you have cancer and the doctor gives you that report, you are supposed to be saying, according to the UTH report, I have cancer. But according to the gospel report, by his stripes, Oh, you can give Jesus a big hand of praise. According to the doctor's report, I have cancer. But according to the report of our Lord Jesus Christ, Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1 down, I am healed. By his stripes I am healed. Now there, Brother Spencer, it's where now you start relying on the report of the gospel. Every time you wake up and say, cancer, I know you came into my body. But I want to announce to you that the God I save is a great God. The things that are impossible with doctors, they are possible with my God. I decree and declare that this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost and it's cancer free. By the stripes of Jesus, I am Every morning when you wake up, you address cancer and say, Cancer, I know I got this report from the doctor, but I'm here to decree and declare. Every morning, Edward, every morning, every evening, every... I'm saying to you, let the sick say, I am healed. Speak the word. Amen. Speak the word. Amen. And before you know it, cancer will hear the word of the law. Do you know, Sister Tukombe, the Bible says angels grow in strength as they hearken to the voice of God. So when you are speaking the word of God, you are enforcing what God has said. And I want you to know that the word of God, the way in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same word became. The word, Edward, has the capacity to transform itself and enter into the cancer-ridden body and it should be there. I want you to know when the word comes up, the Bible says, let God arise and cancer will know what to do. All you need is to download. Just get the word into your spirit. And I want you to know that when the word gets into your spirit, something begins to happen. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. And I want to go further. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, the race is not for the swift. The battle is not for the strong. But time and chance happens to all of us like so. This is our year of elevation. I said this is our year of elevation. Let me tell you, Manamuila, even if you retire, it does not mean that's the end of you. Uh -uh. You see, most of these tires you, you buy, they are retreaded. They put the other tire. When the tire is finished, they take it for retreading. That is called uh, retreading. So what God does, Manamuila, 
when the education system and everyone says he has retired god will use the same tire he will use the same tire and retread it where man's efforts end that's the starting point of god and to what he can do there is no end how many people am i talking to those who were born for greatness say something into your life i said say something even when you walk don't you you see this wallet it looks fat and somebody when they see me walk they would say a pastor has got a lot of money they would say a pastor has got a lot of money why because of the same wallet it's big and if you are moving in the flesh you can even come and search me because of the way it looks hallelujah but listen this is a symbol of faith that i'm ready to receive <laughs> glory to god so when i don't have money of course there is money but you know what i do i fill it with business cards i fill it with a lot of business cards because they may think i'm broke so i go in the wardrobe and get some business cards and i put them there it has a compartment for business cards so i do like this driving license rage fiance film so when i put it here you say ah pastor alodan hallelujah let me tell you something it is just a faith because faith causes things which are not as though they so when i wake up in the morning i say bless the lord oh my soul and all that is within me blesses holy name this is the day that the lord has i will rejoice and be glad in it this is why i will never be a kada because my god is great and all of you kadas listening to me torturing this nation move out from where people are cheating you pf kadas you pnd kadas and what if you know you are a kada you live on fitenges and you live on handouts you are too big for handouts god is able to change your life stop messing around with people's lives stop beating innocent lives and protecting people who are enjoying tea iwe ni shive kumakof fefe wa shive makof ndekuponya ka ndekuponya iwe lekana iwe ba ku saving eko how many of you know what i'm talking about you were born for greatness so you must know that god will not do beyond what you say if you go into the word of god to come there, you read Je about jacob jacob said lord i won't let you go until you bless me did god bless him god said because you have prevailed against man and god what is your name he said it the woman with the issue of blood she said within her heart when i go to jesus if only i can touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole it was not easy there were giants there people were packed everyone was pressing to see jesus but i want you to know there was this determined woman she could not push through the men i am sure she went down where jesus was and she started crying and this giant is what she was looking for was not a handshake 
she already made her mind up if only i can touch the hem of his God. i don't need a handshake all i need is oh jehovah god all i need is just the hem of his God. I am not looking for a title. All I want is to be in his presence. Because in his presence are the fullness only I can touch the hem of his garment. I shall be made whole. And the Bible says Jesus stopped and said who touched me? Mayo did you ever hear god say who pushed me and who, who touched me physically he said no brother chris i want you to know that even in you our poverty when you touch the hem of his garment Others may be shouting, Jesus, Jesus, their shouts are nothing. But when you go with purpose, if only I can touch the name of his garment. And the Bible says, Jesus said, who touched me? And Peter, as usual, in the flesh, he says, Master, you have heard, I mean, you have seen, all these people are pressing against you. How can you say that you touch me? Jesus said, Peter, I know what I'm talking about. There is this touch of a desperate poor person from John Howard. There is this touch. Jesus is touched by your condition. When you go to him, you don't have to be elaborate. Like some people pray, even to God you take slam. Oh, Jehovah God, you know, Jehovah Praise God, hallelujah. And when God hears that, he'll be able to stand. And he said, this is a different touch. And the woman, the Bible says, fell at his feet and said, Master, it is me. Please forgive me. And Jesus said, Woman, your faith, your faith, because I saw you planned it way back, your faith may it be done according to your. You are healed. I want you to know when you touch Jesus. God will be touched. Amen. There are people who know I'm a thief. I do not deserve to be in the company of Jesus. What I'll do is, since he's passing through Cairo Road, I'm going to climb in a tree. Because social media may see me as a commission of ZRA. Let me go in the tree where nobody will see me. I just want to see Jesus. Don't you? The woman wanted to touch Jesus. Zacchaeus wanted to just see Jesus. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. And he said, I just want to see Jesus. Even in 2020, I need to see Amen. Jesus. Amen. And when he climbed the tree, Jesus is coming. They are shouting, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Too much noise. He stops there. And he looks up and he says, Zacchaeus, come down. Amen. Donji, you will never hide from Jehovah. Even when you PND can't select you, Jesus will. Amen. Even when PF think you are a riffraff, Jesus thinks otherwise. Amen. I want you to know those who were born for greatness, God will take time Amen. to stop for you. Amen. You don't need somebody to say, hey, there is a commission of whatever they are. Your promotion is coming. I don't know who I've spoken to, but I've just spoken to somebody here. Your promotion is coming. 
your elevation is coming. People have obscured you. They don't want you to see the president. They don't want you to see the minister. They don't want you to see the chief. They don't want you to see the principal. But let me tell you something. When Jesus is passing, when Jesus is passing, if it's time for you to shine, he will stop for you. May Jehovah stop for everyone saying amen. amen. Doesn't matter. People can suppress you. They can oppress you. They can depress you. But Jesus will impress you. Amen. I said Jesus will impress you. Amen. From today, Bambanga, know what to say. Amen. Know what to say that. I'm a words yakari. All my children, Kaluva Chola, my compound, they have never, from childhood, they've never heard me or their mother say, Ichimutwe. Because I'm a man of faith. If I say Ichimutwe, Limbit Chakula, Elo Faith Yache Pokabwesha. So I avoid certain words. Each time I look at my children, I say, You were born for greatness. You were born for greatness. And I want you to know that all it takes is the attitude before your throne, before the throne of God. Know what to say. God will not do beyond what you say. And Donji, like I said, God will never perform miracles beyond your thoughts. As a man thinks, I gave you the, the scripture, Proverbs 23 verse 7, is that the one? As a man thinks, so is he. Let me close with this Jairus. How powerful the thoughts are. May I have yeah, bring that. There is a man <coughs> called Rick Godwin. Each time he sat in the sitting room, he would not sit like this. He came from a poor family. He came from a divorced family. But before the father rejected him, <clears throat> before the father ran away with another woman, when he was with a mother, Rick Godwin will always sit like this. Always. And he would be like this. And the, the father always said to him, why do you like sitting in that position? He would go back and sit like this. But each time he sat, he would go like this. And the father one day said, Rick, why do you sit like that? He says, Daddy, I always imagine myself flying. <laughs> I always imagine myself flying. Now he's talking about flying, Sunny. The father is poor. The mother is poor. But he always thought one day I'm going to fly a plane. Amen. So he was always imagining going through the clouds. Always imagining flying. As a person thank you. One day we are in uh, South Africa with my wife at the World Trade Center attending the conference by uh, Ray Macaulay. Rema Church. Rick Godwin is preaching. Amen. And he comes down and he says, Brethren, I just want to testify the greatness of God. Amen. He says, I've just entered the history books of America. I was given a rare opportunity. I am the first civilian to fly the fastest jet in America as a civilian. God bless him. He had the jet and everything. But this time, 
I don't know how it happened. They nominated Rick Godwin to fly those bombers. And he went in the air, jets, whee, whoop, whoop, whoop. and he's in the record books, a preacher, Amen. flying a supersonic bomber Amen. of America. And he goes in history. Where did it begin from? From force. The father did not understand that greatness was in the sitting room. I want you to know when you are born for greatness, Brother Spencer, your friends will never understand you. The people will not go by you with your confession. They will always say, Bachimfwembe, you are a proud fella. So what? Say what God has said about your life. Walk in your destiny. When you walk, if you are a lady like I've always said, don't look, walk like you are looking for marriage, for any man to marry you. And you put on if tenge, Nangumakishi dancer. In this time and age, even when you are not dancing, if you and you say, you are scaring them. Elon Shilelandati, go and put on a mini skirt. Nakanani, kafianta dress. That's not what I'm saying. Footing the back of Monava Kalanda to Udi Ule. You just need decent dressing. Dress modestly. Do your hair. Even if you are looking for a man, don't show it. Have a, uh, sis, can I have your phone number? Ah, no problem. 09789. <laughs> <laughs> As I always say, mm. take your time. Amen. When a man stops and says, Kalongos, may I talk to you? They say, Yes. Kalia. Ulevika ko Kalia. Yes. Akabwa nakashika. Yes. Na uchitako ne minwe. Not if you kwati nagadi muri wa milando. Na uchitako. Na uchitako ne fi minwe. Yes. How best may I help you? Uh, Nachafa have a phone number for what? Can't she look at? Ule kanda fati mwelesa. Hallelujah! Glory to God! But just tell him, no sir, I can't give you the number. I can't. No, Sissy, I know where you live. Milo na Milo. Three weeks. Four weeks. Five months. He doesn't have a number. I want you to know that you have given that man sleepless night. Amen. Father, I bind the other men that want to go towards that lady in Jesus' name. The prayer life will change. Not the phone number. No problem. It want to me now, especially Ubushiku. Uli Ule. But when you take time, even six months, two years, three years, the man is at it, you know that is genuine. Then one day just say, okay, I'm left for a number. Ni, but please, I don't like Mpumvia. The man will know. But we have a generation of girls who move with phone numbers on their t-shirts. <laughs> if you want to call me, call me on this number. And how do you go to that level? You see, <clears throat> the difference between gravel and emerald is the way you access them. Gravel, anybody can dig it. And they will fill the track. But Emerald, you push. You go down. You go down. 
just one stone called Barbara. I said one stone called Jane. If you are a decent woman, one stone will transform the man's life. Because they know that I've gotten greatness. I want everyone in this building, from today, know what you say. Say great things about you. I want all of you that are in business, even if you have a stationary shop, don't say, I've got a cantemba, parapakona. Stop it. Just say, I've got a big supermarket. I sell stationery. I can do everything. When they give you the business guard, go and contract. Go somewhere. Uh, horizon. And bring them. That's wisdom. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Call things which are not as though they are. I want you to know you can begin to speak your future right now. How great you are to become. Uh, I started speaking this future the other time, I think two days ago, my wife heard um, uh, Pastor Mutemwa Michael in South Africa, Pastor John Chikontwe, and Pastor Charles Musonda and myself, we were on a four-way conference call, and we were talking, and somebody just said, Pastor Chiruba, it's amazing to see this, what is happening on social media. Right here in England, we've been talking about what happened this week. And he, Pastor Chikontwe says, I always tell the people that the confession of this young man has not changed. Even when I would have no, no food in Bible college, my good friends know, Joshua Banda, Pre, uh, Pastor Safwali, Pastor Malala of Kalomo, and many more, Kashweka, Timothy Kashweka, we were in the same Bible college. Sometimes I would go without money, without what, but what I never went to college without was chili. Hallelujah. But greatness was there. I would say things for the future. Look at what Bonke saw in 1981. But Camnet TV is three years and eight months. Mm. Amen. Three years and ten months actually. Because this September we will be making four years of the establishment of Camnet TV. But look where it has gone. Look what it has done. I want you to know that it was seen in 1981. But nevertheless, my mother, when I was born, she just said, Sonny, you know that of the, five, the six of you, all the five were given their names by your father. But when you were born, because of the way the difficulties I went through, I almost died, you almost died, I asked your father to say, Will you allow me to name this boy? And my father said, please name him. And my mother goes on to say that he shall be called Moses Kanchule Chiluba. And daddy said, why Moses? He said, like, she said, like Moses of the Bible, my son will lead many to the Lord. Amen. At birth, the only thing she miscalculated was Kanchule. And before she died, you remember Bakabwe? I went to her, I said, Mom, this name you gave me, Kanchule. She says, I like it, Sonny. I said, Mommy, Umfweni, Ubuchushu Bumpitamo, even as a preacher, is she now? And she said, Mwa Tata, so what do you want to become? I said, just the opposite of this. She said, what's the opposite? I said, Kangwine. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and she gave me the permission. I went through my lawyer then, Mr. Munalisa, and he changed the deed poor. He changed the names Moses Kangwine Chiloba. Why? And from the time my name changed. Amen. How do you name a child? Tigonekut. Tirienj. 
We can conquer the He was in the state house. He had food, government. Okay, 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 Ishina at Mavuto Chiguila Mbeba. Never give them those names. If you know that your child was born for greatness, say something. How many people have I got who were born for greatness? Who say, Pastor, this service has just changed my life. Never will I say anything bad about myself. And my thoughts will be great. Whether I'm with my friends. Can you imagine, Brother Kawe? Joseph would tell his brothers and say, I saw you bowing before me. And they hated him because of the dreams. They called him a dreamer. They changed his name, Donji, from Joseph to a dreamer. Here comes a dreamer. How many dreamers have I got in here? Every dreamer, please stand in Jesus' name. Those of you that are saying, Pastor, choir members, please come up with me and may God bless you. May God bless you. I want us to pray together even with those that are watching this broadcast. Those of you that dream that you were born for greatness. Pastor Chiluba, it doesn't matter who has said what to me. I am going to stick to what the Bible says. I'm going to be speaking great words. I'm going to be thinking about great thoughts. I refuse to be called a compound person because I was born for greatness. And before I go to the grave, people will talk about my greatness. History will write about my greatness. How many of you feel that you'll be in the history books of Zambia? Financially, or you'll be an employer, or you'll be a landlord, you'll be whichever field, if it's in sport. I want you to lift up your hands. Forget about your background, forget about what you have gone through. You say, Pastor, I was born for greatness. And those of you that are watching us by television, my wife and I just want to pray for all of you that this nation, God may raise millionaires, that this nation, God may raise names. And you say, Pastor, that's me. Lift up your hands. Say this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father forgive, me forgive me of all my hidden sins. Known and unknown. Known and unknown. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Let the words. Let the words of my mouth. Of my mouth. And the thoughts. And the thoughts. The meditation. The meditation of, of my heart. heart. Come before you. Be accepted. Be accepted. Before your throne. Before your throne. Father God. Father God. This morning. This I lift up my hands. I, lift up my hands. I, declare, I declare that I was born for greatness. Destroy the record of failures. All the failures in my life. Destroy them in Jesus' name. As I stand, As I, stand I accept your law. I accept you as my law and my savior the church my church my city my nation shall know that i was born for greatness heavenly father this is my word today accept my thoughts accept my confession in Jesus, name. in Jesus name father i pray father, and plead the blood of the lord, yes, lord. upon the people that are here lord, in, in this building yes, yes, lord. the people you have given my wife and i to shepherd yes, that jehovah these were born for greatness, greatness may the dna of greatness father be imparted in, the in their lives i pray for those that are watching by television that father they were born for greatness may the hand of the law locate each one of us fish us out from wherever we are in jesus mighty name father build a great nation through us as individuals in jesus name we have prayed with thanksgiving amen, amen. hallelujah give jesus a big hand of praise
You can do better than that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to invite those of you that are watching. Today you didn't come, but next week I want you here. Amen. Those of you who don't have a church, where to go? I want you to know that you were born for greatness. Amen. This move and revival of greatness in Zambia is not stopping with five people. But God is going to mobilize people from the southern province, western province, northwestern, all the ten provinces. God will call people that we are born for greatness. Is there somebody saying, Father, uh, my pastor, I am here also. I am here from your province. Is there somebody saying, Father, I am here. Wave your hand. Let the camera see. Let heaven see that you are among the people that have been called to greatness. Amen. To those of you that are not with us, we are saying keep watching Camnet TV. And remember, Camnet TV is not just another channel. Give them a big hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you.